The Pam Hub Story you will not see anywhere else. Fox 2 has captured years of exclusive video. You better back off. And has the only interview. Did you kill Betsy? Hup was the last person known to see Betsy Faria alive. Is she breathing at all? <laughs> Faria was found stabbed to death 55 times, a steak knife left in her neck. No Police focused on Betsy's husband, but Fox 2 had nagging questions. Why didn't Betsy pick up those calls? It would take criminal investigators years to catch up with Fox 2's reporting. You've done more investigative work than the initial investigator. It took Hupp's murder of a disabled man to finally catch the attention of authorities. They could have saved two lives. We'll show you where Hupp is today and what's next in the new murder charge she faces tonight. The real truth about Pam Hupp, an exclusive Fox Files investigation. I've spent more than a decade in a relentless pursuit of the truth. The story now a TV show, book, and talk in homes across the country. We were here from the beginning. 11 years ago, inside a Lincoln County home, Betsy Faria was dying of cancer and didn't have much time left. So why did someone stab her over and over again, leaving her to die on the floor? The more we learned, we kept coming back with questions about a woman named Pam Hupp. Russ Faria, the only suspect in his wife's murder a decade ago because of Pam Hupp's accusations. Hupp claimed she was his wife's best friend. Everybody calls her one of Betsy's best friends. And there's probably a dozen people that she would have considered her best friend over Pam. Pam was a friend, and that was it. Imprisoned for more than three years, Faria often thought he would spend the rest of his life locked up for a murder he did not commit. Faria found his wife dead inside their living room December 27, 2011. The crime so horrific, Fox 2's coverage began immediately. Deputies will not allow us any closer than four houses away. Eight days later, January 4, 2012, Faria was charged with murder. It was clear Pam Hupp was the prosecution's star witness. Fox 2 wanted to know more about her and obtained this first exclusive video of her, November 2013. It was Russ Faria's murder trial, and Fox 2 was the only media there. That coverage was very crucial in raising people's awareness and in this case. The 2013 murder trial revealed a key fact the jury never heard. Not only did Pam Hupp insist on driving Betsy Faria home the night Betsy died, Pam Hupp was also the only beneficiary of Betsy Faria's $150,000 life insurance policy. Jurors were never told about the life insurance because that evidence was suppressed by a judge. Russ Faria's attorney Joel Schwartz told us that information was so explosive, it was enough to charge Pam Hupp with Betsy's murder. Appoint me as a special prosecutor and let me prosecute the right person and I'll guarantee you a conviction. That $150,000 life insurance policy signed into Hupp's name four days before Betsy died. Only Fox 2 was in the courtroom when jurors convicted Russ Faria. Schwartz dropped his head in disbelief. Faria made the long, slow walk to a jail cell where he remained for years. It could have been the end of the story, except for nagging questions we had for Pam Hupp. It was January 2014, shortly after Russ Faria's conviction. We got a surprise we still marvel at to this day. Pam Hupp spoke to us at her doorway for nearly 30 minutes. Interested in following up at all? You said you might talk to me that first um, day of trial. Not right now. Yet she kept talking in a rambling 30-minute conversation on a cold January day. One of our key questions involved three phone calls Betsy failed to answer. These were important calls Betsy was expecting from her daughter. Why didn't Betsy pick up those calls? The calls at her house? They had asked me and I said I don't recall her getting calls while I was there. I was in the area still trying to get out of Troy at 727. It's recorded. I was still sitting in the car at 704 with Betsy talking to my husband. I mean... But why didn't she pick up the calls when you were still with her? 7 717, I think. 721. 721. Uh, maybe either we were in her bedroom then. I don't know. I don't know where her phone was. I never even heard any calls. I don't know if I left right before she got a call. I don't know. Like I told them, I wasn't expecting for police to come to my door that next morning. So I wasn't taking notes on my whole evening. No, I understand that. But I just thought it would be important to her to 
Absolutely. pick up the phone for her daughter, and her daughter said, hey, i got to get the cell well, phone, I need you to pick up, the that thing she'd have with it with Betsy her. Betsy is, oh, she would have it with her? Yeah, that she'd be, and you know, hey, my daughter's going to call me in 20 minutes. I'd yeah, I don't know about that. I've never known, Betsy doesn't not pick up many calls. Right, so I'm she just wondering why she didn't business. pick up those. That I can't answer. You don't remember the phone ringing? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Was Pam Hupp in Betsy's home during those missed calls? Haunting because phone records show Pam also called Betsy right in the middle of those missed calls from Betsy's daughter, which came in at 721, 726, and 730. Pam's call was at 727. Maybe either we were in her bedroom then. You heard her say she may have been in Betsy's bedroom. Two years earlier, she told investigators the morning after the murder, she was home in O'Fallon 30 minutes away. Here's that recording. I'm trying to think which one I called. I called Betsy to tell her I was home. Those investigators did not know cell phone tracking placed Hupp and Troy at or near the murder scene. Next, we had to ask Hupp. Did you kill Betsy? No, I did not kill Betsy. I had no reason to kill Betsy. Next, more of Fox 2's unbelievable interview with Pam Hupp, her erratic behavior. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was your, what was your... And Hupp's possible connection to bizarre anonymous letters. We had police conspiring to keep us from Russ and Pam sending us letters.